Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 131. This episode is sponsored by M. Bombay Cigar, representing the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. And by Aged Selects, providing cigar enthusiasts with premium long filler cigars aged at least five years at an extraordinary price. Order online at CigarFrontier.com. And by Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop, located here in Rhode Island, they have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, it's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Still Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by H.A. Fernandez Cigars, handcrafted in Nicaragua using the finest materials. Brands include the San Latano, Pino Lero, and H.A.'s recently released New World brand. Visit them online at hafernandezcigars.com. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And by Ocean State Cigars. Try the J. Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shade Silk and the new J. Grotto Anniversary Series. Visit them on the web at oceanstatecigars.com. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadori, and joined on the lines via Skype from North Carolina, Mr. Will Cooper. Greetings, everybody. Welcome, Will, to the show. Uh, as I mentioned that you're in North Carolina, I can't help but think about the new cigar store that's opened up in a part of North Carolina that I'm very familiar with. So hopefully we can talk about that maybe on this show or the next one. We will. I'll be spending two days up there. That's awesome. Well, from the day job, even. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> I think that was for Nick. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we'd also like to welcome our new sponsor, Dos Le Re Los Reyes. Did I say that right? Dos, uh, De Los Reyes. De Los Reyes. Sorry. I've been drinking, in case you haven't been able to notice that, Will. Uh, so, Will, why don't you tell us about our new sponsor? Well, we're really happy to have them aboard. Uh, De Los Reyes uh, is the Reyes family. So, if you know of uh, Augusto Reyes... Um, they're long-time people in this industry, a uh, history of growing and manufacturing cigars. Uh, they recently rebranded their company called De Los Reyes, um, and they're right now focusing on two lines um, under a brand called Saga that they launched at the trade show. And you'll be hearing a lot about these cigars in the next few weeks. One is called the Saga Golden Age, and one is called the Saga Blend Number no. 7. Um, the Golden Age is a cigar a little more geared for a kind of a retro-style cigar, well, the number seven is a little more of a contemporary type of cigar. So we're real excited to have them on board, and uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from them in upcoming weeks. Excellent. I'd like to uh, introduce our very special guest, Mr. Matt Alderman. Uh, Matt and I work together at our day job, uh, actually, uh, at Tenable Network Security. And Matt's been with me all day. And we, um, well, we, we lit up very early today, and we've pretty much been smoking all day. All day. <laughs> all day. All day. So, uh, so, <laughs> about 10 a.m.? Yeah, yeah I'm like, like Matt, yeah. you need to stick around for Stoey Geeks and, and join us. And Matt's very much a connoisseur of fine spirits and, and cigars. And if when you hear about our smoking day, we'll cover it in the Stoey Geeks of the Weeks, Will. It's just it's totally epic, and it's not done yet, which is kind of interesting. That, so. That's great. <laughs> it is. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Yep. Matt and I had a lot of business to do, and what better way to do that than over cigars? So, Amen. That's, yep. that's what we did. Uh, I'm I'm very excited, Will, for our interview for this show. Uh, as many of you know, I'm very much a computer nerd. Uh, as is evidenced by the name of the uh, cigar show that we do is called the Stogie Geeks, right? Uh, Will and I both are very much in, in tune with technology. And when Will said he had someone from Cigar Oasis to come on, I was extremely excited. Um, so we have Hein Khan on from Cigar Oasis. Welcome. Hi. Pleasure How are to be you? Here. Yes, it's nice to have you on the Stogie Geek show. Absolutely. So, hi. Why don't you start by by telling us about some of the the latest kind of? Well, I guess first start with what's some of the um, like kind of foundation for the company uh, of Cigar Oasis and what products do they create? 
Sure. Yeah. First, just a bit about myself. I'm not a geek. I'm a sales guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the last uh, year, especially, got to learn a lot more about the technology that goes behind building uh, our great product, and especially uh, in the recent uh, year or so with the Wi-Fi um, implementation, which we'll get to. But a little history for Cigar Oasis. Uh, it started in 97, released uh, at the RTDA show of 98. Uh, my boss, Al Fondos, was an engineer, uh, sold his company, and in retirement was playing golf with a couple people and mutual friends of the guys at Cigar Aficionado magazine. And this is just the midpoint of the cigar boom. And they're saying how, you know, people are using these humidors at home with these passive uh, humidification devices, which are just not doing the job, uh, especially in the wintertime and the high fluctuations in humidity uh, were destroying cigars. And he says, well, you have experience in in humidity control, how about creating something automatic, electronic, that the average home user can use and can take their care of the cigars long-term without the constant messing around. And so they went about creating the first Cigar Oasis. At uh, first it was made here in Brooklyn, New York. I'm actually on Long Island now uh, where our offices are, but at the time it was made uh, in Brooklyn, very small profit margin, and it had a retail uh, price of about $400. Um, and after a few years, they uh, got some outside investors and started mass producing them overseas. Uh, and then from the first model, Cigar Oasis, they uh, kept evolving. And uh, until today, we we're at with four different models, servicing everything from a 50-count Ubinor up to a smaller walk-in and everything in between. Uh, we also bought Western Humidor, the maker of the original digital hygrometer for the cigar market, um, and last year, uh, January 2014, we released Next Generation of Cigar Oasis. All the models have new features, uh, including Wi-Fi capability for remote uh, monitoring and control from your smartphone. I, what, what tips do you have for people who are trying to maintain their cigar humidors? Maybe with some of those, start with some of those more traditional devices that you talked about um, that kind of had their problems? Like, what, what were some of the well, problems? The, the short answer would be get yourself a cigar oasis. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember when I was first starting to smoke cigars, bought my first humidor uh, on, on uh, Fifth Avenue at JR Cigars, and I bought my PG solution, my passive humidification device, my hygrometer, went home, full of gusto, trying to set it up. And I remember it was the winter time, and the guy told me 70-70. And, um, you know, got there uh, for a good week or two, and then all of a sudden it's dropping to 55. I refilled it, and then I'm at 80. Mm -hmm. So it's true. I'm just your average consumer. And eventually I gave up, and I just buy cigars on the go at the stores. Uh, which I still do. I still make a point of doing that. But obviously, since then, I've managed to, you know, have stock of a good 1,500 cigars at home and some of the office. And what allowed me to do that is the Cigar Oasis. But practical advice for somebody using something passive would involve constant monitoring. Um, and first of all, if you're going to be using something passive, definitely don't be using the floral foam by itself. Uh, that sponge uh, can easily... Uh, get mold, get moldy. Uh, definitely the, the lesser of two evils would be the beads or the gels, uh, assuming you know how to monitor it. And monitoring involves rotating the cigars, um, you know, maybe taking some of the beads out, adding some as is needed. Um, you know, we, we in our devices, since we're not utilizing uh, the, the floral foam as a method of pushing out humidity, we're just using it as a way of holding the water, the fan, and the sensors, what's doing the work, we still use that and just using distilled water. So there's never any mold growth even after years of using uh, the, the same Cigar Oasis cartridge uh, because it's just holding the water again. Um, it's not being left idle like that. It's attached to the fan. Hein, what recommendations do you have for people that might have, let's go to larger humidors that stand you know, three to six feet tall in balancing the humidity at the top versus the humidity at the bottom? 
Yeah, so that, that always gets tricky. Um, our new Cigar Oasis Magna, which is designed to go into those power humidors or the cabinets that retailers use, mm-hmm. we actually put the sensor on the remote. So the unit is kept on the bottom typically, and the higher shelves are often slanted, especially at retailers. But we put the sensor on the remote so that way they can choose where to put that. So they usually put it at the midway point so that there's always going to be a slight variance of somewhere between two and five. Um, I've, uh, noticed, I've noticed as much as 10 between top there and can, bottom. It can be. The key is proper placement and that where the ear is leaving, uh, the area is uninterrupted. Uh, if somebody's using passive or something that size, really, I wish them good luck. Some people have managed to do it. It works best in the cooler doors. Mm. But if you're talking about a wood cedar humidor, really hard to maintain it with something passive when you're talking about that amount of shelves. Yeah, yeah. It's a big it's a big variance. You know, it's interesting. So, you know, you talked about the 70-70 kind of rule. I, for me personally, what I've, re- you know, kind of experienced in my, my time is that if I keep it at 70, I notice that there's not much variance for increase in humidity. That if I'm at 70 and it starts to creep up, that I can be at 75 or 80 really quickly. And, you know, 60 is kind of, it's too low f- for me. And if you start going below 60, the cigars start to dry out. I kind of find that like the magic kind of variance is that 65, 68. Do you kind of see the same thing? And do you recommend like where people should kind of set for their environment? I'm I'm definitely with you on that. I'm about to smoke this Abe Flores that's been sitting in my a desktop here in the office, and I'm just feeling it, and I can't wait to smoke it because I know it's kept at a perfect 66, 67. That's my yeah, sweet spot. Me too. That's where I feel I get the best draw. Mm. Um, I know people, you know, I get the I go to retailers a lot, and they complain about, um, you know, novice smokers walking in and they start feeling the cigars, and they want to feel that spongy, soft. I cannot stand smoking one of those cigars. Oh, it mm. feels like my lung is coming out. The, the, the amount of work I have. I don't like doing a lot of work. Uh, it's supposed to be a relaxing experience. And so I feel something over humidified over over uh, 68. It's going to make me work harder to draw. And I don't like that. So I definitely like it at 66, 67. Um, so uh, the beauty of the Cigar Oasis is that you can set it to the exact point that you want. Now, of course, it's easier to stay at exactly that throughout the entire humidor in the smaller ones, but the larger ones, and especially with the retailers, people opening and closing, there's going to be that variance. But you can set it from anywhere uh, for, for, for aging or restoration purposes from as low as 40 up to 80 for seasoning and everywhere in between. So you can even, mm-hmm. if you really like it very specific, you can put it at 665 um, That's That's, the, that's what, what uh, the benefit of the Cigar Oasis and, uh, you know, there are some other, uh, you know, they're not, they're not quite passive, but they're not electronic either systems out there without naming names. And they, they claim to be two-way solutions. What people often forget is that without circulation, with a fan, it's going to take hours for it to eventually get to that level. So eventually it will, and it is a two-way solution. But every time you open the humidor... So if you're going in twice a day and it's taking six hours to eventually recoup that humidity, especially in the wintertime, most of the day it's not actually at the desired set point. No, With the Cigar Oasis, with circulation, you're recouping the humidity. You'll hear the fan go on after you close it, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and you're back at your sweet spot. Now, do your fans run even when there's not variances in humidity? Like, Can you set it so that it just circulates? Uh, it's designed to for the fan to turn on as soon as it detects any reading below the set point. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's got a, uh, it, you know, not a quality seal, they'll hear it go on, you know, maybe every uh, half hour or even more, uh, depending on the season, depending on the quality of the seal. But with a good quality humidor, with a good seal, it shouldn't have to go on right. more than every few hours. Just for enough to get back to that set point and then turn off. I, I, I really like the strategy. Of the, what I do in some of my humidors is I tend to like to, and I like that about Cigar Oasis, that you can move the sensor. I tend to put the sensors and even most of the fans lower where the humidity tends to fall so that the fans are blowing that humidity up and then sensing at the higher humidity point. 
and I find that helps keep a more stable environment. Does that kind of jive with, with kind of your philosophy on that? I agree with that. And just to be clear, that is just the Magna that has that remote sensor. And that the reason we did it on the Magna, that's typically the, the larger humidors that we tend to have those issue with variants. But uh, our Ultra model, which goes in, is a slim uh, lid mounted for 50 to 100 desktop, the XL yeah. for 100 to 300, and the Plus for the end table is 300 to 1,000 sticks. Generally, we don't have any of those variant uh, issues, and uh, it doesn't have a remote sensor, but it really isn't necessary at that point. It's pretty. It's a smaller, closed environment, and within a few minutes, the whole humidor is basically within two percent of the same right. same reading. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine you probably sell more of the smaller units for those smaller humidors, and, and a lot of those are probably the ones with more of the problems, right? Because every smaller desktop that I've ever seen or and I've ever purchased comes with that analog hygrometer and the green foam humidification. I've always wondered yeah. why they come with that because that's both those two things combined are not what I would ever recommend to someone who wants to maintain a humidor. Yeah, the simple reason for that is that's what's cheapest. And yeah. we want to be able to say that it includes humidification and, and a hygrometer. So what we tell people is you want to leave that analog there, but understand it's just for design purposes. Some of them are, are clearly manufactured. The needle is not even designed to move. You'll see them on the retail counter already at 70, uh, even with them being closed uh, inside an unhumidified store. So uh, definitely not not uh, reliable. And the green foam, uh, yeah, good luck trying to maintain that by itself. Mm. So, yeah, that's just because they're cheapest, but... Um, you know, people typically upgrade from there to the gels or the beads for another couple bucks, and then eventually they'll go home, and after a few months, they'll call us, and they'll get those of cigar away. So, so typically, people are not buying it with the humidor unless they're already previously educated. They'll try to mess around with what's included and then realize they need something that really works. Yeah. Okay. Matt, do so you, do you have a humidor at home? Well, that- I do, and it, so I live in Denver, mm-hmm. south of Denver, so I'm at 68, 80 in elevation, extremely... Mm-hmm dry climate high desert i have a horrible time keeping humidity in because we're drier than phoenix right Mm -hmm. so i've had horrible times trying to figure out you know how to keep that humidity level just right and in the foam he's right i mean i can't keep that thing wet enough Right, right and and it dries out so fast where i am so you know you know, what I'm interested in really is to understand, you know, in a low humidity environment like the desert, like mm-hmm. Phoenix or where I live up in the upper elevations, you know, something that can balance that humidity for me would really help mm-hmm. because that's a struggle for me. Definitely. Yeah. And people often think, all right, they're in a really dry environment. Just add, just add. But with something passive like the phone by itself you're going to push out way too much humidity right in the beginning and nothing's holding it back. So it's just going to over humidify the cigars, which is even worse than under humidification. Cause once you're at That's that true. point, you know, it's really hard to get the cigar back to, to be able to smoke uh, properly again. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend you, you look into a cigar oasis and can throw you a deal. I'm sure. Um, and yeah, you know, it, you know, it doesn't uh, reduce humidity, but it it it, uh, it will it will stay stable uh, if, if the if it's at the already at the optimal level, and it will go on for just enough time um, to to humidify. And especially our XL model, which is our best seller, it's the only it's the first and still the only electronic humidifier on the market that is a sealed design. So that being the case, it can be as long as six, seven, eight months that you can go without refilling it because there's never any humidity being leaked out passively. And that's the key. You know, hmm. Nothing coming out passively. That's great. Like, like I said, it's tough to keep cigars at the right humidity level where I live. It just, the elevation just kills me. Right. Will, uh, sorry, I know we've been kind of, uh, no, you no, know no, me, no. I'm very passionate about this, about this subject because I've gone through a lot of different humidors. Right. Did you have questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and, and, and Chime, we, we talk a lot about humidification on this show, so we're really, really glad to have you. Um, and, uh, Paul, this guy does an unbelievable product demo, too. As someone who does product demos in my day job, yeah. uh, this guy sets the bar, let me tell you. But, um, so, I, you know, just a, a note on the products, I, 
I actually for years fought the, using the passive products. And, and, you know, when I went to these products, these products absolutely work. And I can't tell you as someone who's the type of personality as anal as I am, when I went and started using these products, how much easier my life became. Uh, one product that I've really liked is the Ultra. And, and what I've been able to do with that Ultra is, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's, it's for a small desktop humidor. But I actually was able, was able to put that device on my, um, my desktop. And what that does is I have my best stuff in there. So I'm not, I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Um, so leading with that question, Haim, which is the best selling, which, which device do you find the humor, uh, consumers are going to? Do they tend to go for more to desktop humidor or did you say, you know what, they want it for those stand, stand up? Well, the, the, the highest number of humidor sold is still going to be your desktop, mm -hmm. uh, 75 to 150 count. Uh, and so because of that, our XL is the best selling model for us. And what's great about that is, while it's not thin and lid mountain like the Ultra, um, it's got the versatility to go just as well into a 50 count, way up to a 300. So, uh, you know, I would say o over 60% of the humidor sold are somewhere in between that. So that's why our XL is the best selling model, and that's the one that has the sealed technology. Um, the Ultra, great, great um, for the desktop. You're going to refill that though a bit more often, quite a quite a bit more often, probably twice as frequently as the XL. So Paul and I went through a similar, or more Paul went through a scenario with this. So let's say you have a humidor, um, and I'll just use an example of a desktop humidor, and I go and put the the bigger device in. Um, what what are some of the adverse effects if I went and put that XL and somehow fit it into my desktop humidor? What what are what are some of the drawbacks of doing something like that? And why is it important to get the right device? The only drawback is going to take up more room. Actually, the 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 cost is the same as the Ultra. Uh, our Ultra, the cost for us is actually higher for the Ultra because we have a built-in lithium-ion rechargeable battery on that. The XL does not, uh, so that's another cost, uh, you know, benefit and drawback there. Uh, but again, because it's a sealed design, you're not going to go bad in terms of overkill. Uh, our Plus model, which is the same size as the XL, but designed differently, uh, and that one does uh, release humidity passively as well, designed for the end table humidors up to 10 cubic feet. That one, putting it in a 50, 75 count, that is going to be overkill. But the XL model, definitely, uh, you know, I'd rather not fill it up more often and not have the battery feature. The battery feature is more of a backup anyway, so it's just a matter of preference. You want something that takes takes up uh, the XL and the Plus model takes the space of about six cigars, uh, the Ultra the space of three, and it's lid mounted. Yeah. So the, there's no danger in terms of the fan on that bigger one. Could that have, Could you have too much circulation in in your humidor at that point? No, no. Uh, on the Plus model possibly overkill at a desktop but you, the xl there will not be any over humidification no hmm. okay interesting okay. no it's a good question well um so tell us about this wi-fi technology because I'm, I'm a nerd hide and I've, I've got all kinds of technology in my house i've got a smart things home automation system and you know remotely access cameras and you know wi-fi system that i built myself so i'm, I'm really curious about the the wi-fi system yeah so we're we're uh we're hooked up with a really great uh, company here on the East Coast that's helped us uh, develop the products over time, and they're kind of our our middle person uh, with with the, with the manufacturers overseas. and And they were already creating this technology for um, uh, garage door openers and other systems, uh, and creating a smartphone app to be able to control these remotely. So we took basically the same technology and adapted it for cigar oasis uh so it's a very small looking i have one of these on my desk this is an old prototype but it's just that small and there's a little velcro on the back and you attach it to the side of the humidor and it links up to your local home or office router just like a wireless printer once that's set up you you uh enter the the mac id uh mic id in, uh, onto your uh either your your apple or your android phone and then you're in business. And then from there, you set up the um, you know, the alerts if you so wish. It'll alert you 
via text message or email. If your water's running low, if it hasn't reached the set point within three hours, requires attention. You can also see up to a year's worth of history for humidity and temperature. Um, you can see the trends using graphs that you can you know, design uh, as to your liking. And in real time, you can adjust the set point if you're traveling away from home and you want to lower the set point because it's getting too hot and it's over humidifying, you can lower the set point in real time. You can attach multiple humidors uh, to the same account. And um, yes, yeah, so you're seeing every hour it's sending a signal with the current humidity and the uh, current temperature. And then from the app up to one month of history, from the computer up to a year's worth of history. Yeah, and this is really very affordable too. That's really awesome because you know a, a lot of us in you know we're in my field where Matt and I work right we travel a lot yeah a lot and, and and I know I have several thousand cigars at home and of course one of my concerns when I travel among many right are I'm not home I can't do anything with my humidors right I can't go adjust the humidity in my humidor unless your wife's doing it unless my, unless i send a text message to my wife and, and have her do that and believe me with you know two kids at home that's the last thing she's concerned about is my damn cigars right i mean let's be honest um, but being able to adjust the humidity remotely i think is a really killer feature uh, for you guys and i i think someone that you know some people are, are going to be really in tune with that and really latch on to that because that's a kind of a unique ability to be able to do that remotely i don't know of many other solutions that let you do that remotely. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and the marketplace uh, responded great to it. We, we first had a kind of in beta mode for the first six months. We sold out very quickly. It's in its second production. And we've been actually back ordered for about three months now. They're just coming into port uh, in a week. So anybody watching, by the time uh, you know you, the, the retailers should be getting it back in stock in about a week and a half. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty funny. I um, I have a Smart Things home automation system at my house, um, which I love, which is great. And they make these temperature and humidity sensors. And I've actually dropped those in each of my humidors at home. I have two kind of larger cabinets at home. And it monitors temperature and humidity. And when it fluctuates, it sends me a message and says your temperature and humidity is, is out of whack. But now remotely... I can't do anything about that, right? These are, these are just passive sensors, which I've dropped into my humidor, that don't link up to the humidity sensor inside of my humidor, so I can't adjust remotely. And that's what I, I like about your solution, is the ability to, uh, to change that. Exactly. So this is basically the first product on the market where it's actually connected to the humidification, humidification device, so you can actually control that. I think there was one other thing I remember seeing in Cigar Fist United about two years ago, out of Germany, but that started in the in the range of twenty eight thousand dollars. Wow! Um, <laughs> so, so this is something, and that was mm. strictly for iPhone. Our, ours is for iPhone and our Android, okay. and uh, the MSRP on it is one hundred and twenty dollars on top of your Cigar Oasis. So very affordable, and uh, we waived the subscription cost for the app, so it's full access with the purchase of the attachment. This goes back to our, sub- yeah, our, the our pricing our whole, of uh, yeah, perpetual pricing model, annual yeah. subscription. subscription. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah, really... so, so no subscription, just to be clear. Yeah. So yeah, that's great. So now I need one of these sensors per humidor, correct? Per per cigar oasis device. So yeah, per humidor. Per humidor. Okay, that's really cool. You know, it's it's like a cloud thing. So the sensor talks up to the cloud, and my app talks up to the cloud. So I have like my own account. I can add multiple of these sensors and monitor multiple humidors. Do that all from my smartphone wherever I'm traveling in the world. Correct. Yeah, and uh, Will did a great review on it, and it's got all the images on on his write up at uh, cigarcoop.com. Yeah. So now, if I have a Cigar Oasis device, can I add this Wi-Fi functionality to it? If I already have one. Provided it's a next generation cigar oasis device, so anything any cigar oasis device that was bought uh, um, in the last year and a half would be a next generation, mm-hmm. uh, but not the previous ones. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So in, in the last year and a half, if you've bought one, you can add this functionality onto it. Yeah, assuming it was a next generation. Yeah. And uh, so for for those, if it came in a white box, not a yellow box, it's a next generation. We changed the names, but I don't want to get too. Uh, comp mix, you know, but the the new the new names are simply 
XL, Ultra 2.0 Plus, and Magna. If it's any one of those names, it's definitely compatible with the Wi-Fi. Matt, Matt and I have heard yeah. too with name yeah, changing name products changing, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been in the whole that. migration process. Yeah. <laughs> we've been through that. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. Just did that this month. So. That's, that's really funny. But but what I heard was one Wi-Fi potentially to multiple uh, humidor sensors. So if I have two XLs. No, is it one or is it no, one I think per? it's two. You have one per, yeah. No, it's one per, but the account can you can link up yeah, many link, okay. unlimited. Got yeah. it. Okay. So there's like a little cable that the Wi-Fi adapter, I'm assuming, comes with. Yeah, that you plug into yeah. Your... This is our this is our signature, uh, you know, design mm-hmm. that we started with the first cigar oasis uh, ever to hit the market. So this is a thin ribbon, electronic ribbon that goes through the lid of the humidor to power it up, so you're not losing any humidity through a wire hole. Um, so this, we use the same ribbon to attach to the Wi-Fi attachment for any of the four models, and that hooked up to the USB cable, which goes to the wall. Yeah. Oh, so I see. So the Wi-Fi device sits outside of your yeah, humidor. Yeah, outside. He said on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was inside or outside. Yeah, it's outside. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. A little ribbon cable. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. So you can yeah. close the lid on yeah. your... Good old sheet. technology, the old ribbon cable. Now, does the Wi-Fi, does it give you an external display, or is the display... Like, uh, no, no, it's just got a little light on it, so it's usually it's just red all the time, and then at the moment it's sending a signal once an hour, it turns green, mm-hmm. uh, but otherwise, no, it's nothing on it, it's just a little black box. Okay. But now the uh, Oasis Magna has the uh, LED display panel on it, correct? Correct, so we call that the remote, and that's what's got the sensor on it that could be put anywhere uh, in the cabinet humidor. So that's separate from the Wi-Fi. That's okay. the, every Magna comes with that remote. With and the, the Magna remote has to be inside the humidor because that's the sensor as well. Exactly. Versus the old design, uh, which was called the 2XL. Yeah. That remote didn't have the sensor on it. It was just the reading that could be kept outside. Okay. And obviously, if you have a glass front on a humidor, you could monitor the Magna uh, LED display. Correct, and that's why, that's why we kept it LED. Customers walking into the store want to see that number. We kept it LED so they can see it from afar. Our other models all have screens on it. We switched to an LCD display. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. really cool. That's awesome. So now, um, can you get... So when you look at it from your phone, is that the current reading for that hour, or can you get like a real-time reading from your phone? Uh, it's going to be the last the last uh, reading uh, within the hour. So whenever you okay. log on, whatever the last reading was. So there's so. an hour, pretty much an hour delay, based on the app. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. No, that's really cool. Uh, Will, did you have more questions? Yeah, um, I guess the other thing which kind of touches on is we get a lot of questions a lot on, or I, I may get more of these questions on calibration. I'm trying, yeah, why, don't you explain the, why don't you explain the importance of calibration and, and what needs to be done as far as your advices go? Okay, so all our, uh, both for high, our hygrometer division, the Western hygrometers, and the Cigar Oasis, they go through a thorough uh, calibration, pre, you know, factory calibration process where they're put into uh, a chamber and they're tested twice. So they're all come pre calibrated. Um, so out of the box, you just plug it in and you're ready to go. Over time, the sensor can, you know, vary a bit, but that's usually four or five years down the line. Um, we say all cigar oasis are within 4% of accuracy. Obviously, everybody's hygrometer is the most accurate, but um, we, we tell people, you know, if they're positively sure that the cigar oasis is off by, you know, more than a percent or two, they can go in and recalibrate it within nine points uh, up or down. Uh, but generally, it's not necessary until maybe three or four years already having it. Uh, not even at that point. Uh, hygrometers are dead on. Uh, time and again, the reviews come in for our caliber four and four R hygrometers. Um, they're really popular, not only in the cigar industry, but in the music industry and guitar cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, ranked very high for accuracy. Um, and uh, the, the, they have, they're actually used as a testing for for other products uh for the sensors that's how accurate they are uh but uh, yeah bo- both our hygrometers and our and our cigar oasis humidification devices can be recalibrated very easily so you would advise like someone who like getting one of the products that 
that's something you shouldn't sweat right away with your your devices and correct and and uh you know sometimes they what they do is they have it attached to the water cartridge and they're testing it uh verse they're testing that side by side to a hygrometer and then they find that the cigar waste is reading about four points higher the reason is it's attached to to the um to the water cartridge um, so what they have to realize is if they really want to get the bottom line reading beforehand out of the humidor, they have to take the cartridge off, put it next to the hygrometer and see how that's reading. So there might be, you know, three or four points higher because it's attached to the cartridge, mm-hmm. uh, you know, especially if they're overfilling it, but, um, but it, it's, it's, it's out of the box. It's, it's ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've, I've noticed a, a plus or minus two variants on some of my, uh, devices, and I think that's why I've always recommended like a 67 or 68. That way, if you're plus or minus two, you're still well within the range of keeping yeah. 98% of your cigars really happy, really is essentially what I've noticed. Yeah, and that's why we, we bought Western Humidor. We found that even though the Cigar Oasis devices had the built-in hygrometer and the screen, people wanted to be able to constantly... You know, they don't want they wanted to you know test it always, be positively sure. So they usually had another digital hygrometer, and we heard from 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 the consumer time and again that Western at the time it was the Caliber Three was the best one, and we already had a relationship with them. And somebody wanted to retire, we went and took over the company. So um, that's why you know people ask us, so you already have a hygrometer on the Cigar Oasis? Why did you need that? But we knew that that's what the consumer wanted, and so that's why we offer it as well. That's really cool. So uh, do you guys have, like, new products coming out? I think that's really cool. Wi-Fi technology, you plan on any new product announcements, especially with IBCPR coming up? That's been uh, enough to keep us busy. We are working on a little something, which I'm not at liberty to talk about yet, uh, for this coming IBCPR. Um, uh, our primary focus is, is, uh, empowering the retailers. Uh, it's harder for them to move accessories with, with the competition on the internet with people, uh, you know, with the websites and we, we love all our customers, but we understand that the education happens in the store Mm -hmm. and, and, and they have to pay for so much more for every single product that they have on the shelf there. And so we try to give our best margin to the retailers, besides for lowering our prices to the bricks and mortar store, we always have discounts for them. So uh, generally, you know, getting ready for the IPCPR, we're thinking about what could we possibly do to to better empower the bricks and mortar store who are working so hard to to stay in business and and offer these product and to be able to make a fair profit. Now, hi, the, a lot of people have travel humidors. Have you considered making a solution for travel humidors? Uh, it's nothing, not a specific device uh, yet. We have uh, battery attachments for our XL and Plus model. The Ultra is battery capable. But for travel purposes, what I've been using, and this is something we may, we may design special for Cigar Oasis, but I've been using, since all of our new products use a standard USB connection, mm-hmm. and we switched to that to be able to have the Wi-Fi feature and all, I've been using these, now, not all of them work, but these are cell phone power banks that you can mm-hmm. buy on Amazon that cost around twenty, thirty dollars. I have a lot of those because my yeah. family, my family Just has lots few. of phones, yeah. lots of tablets, lots of right? Tablets. And they all run out of battery, so yeah, they're becoming more commoditized. So yeah, so the issue, you know, our battery attachments. So on the Ultra Two Point the battery will last about a week to two weeks, depending on the seal and season of the humidor. Um, but the with one of these power banks, you can get about up to three, four weeks sometimes. Uh, now, not all of them work with Cigar Oasis because some of them will are designed to turn off as soon as, you know, what would be a full charge on the on yeah. the on the, on, the, on the cell phone. With us, as soon as the fan turns off, I found that some of them were just turning off, and you have to actually press, you know, power again for them to go back on. When the fan turned off, they were taking that as a full charge and turning off. Uh, but some of them will run continuously, so you can get about two, three, even four weeks with some of them. So you can put this, and I had even some cigar reps 
which have large travel humidors mm -hmm. in their cars to go around the stores. So they will use even our XL or Plus model and throw in one of these power banks. Uh, and again, you consult with us because idea. not all of them, we, we know which brand and which models work well with the Cigar Oasis and don't turn off automatically. Especially so, when we go to Black Hat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, Matt, we, we go to, and we talked about this in the last show too, because Will was actually in Vegas for a conference for his day job. And we, as a security industry, we go out to Vegas every year in August, right? So you've got, like, the worst conditions possible for cigars. You've got high heat and low, low humidity. humidity. It's oh, just yeah. awful. And that, that's a great solution for that. I like that. Yep. Will, did you have more uh, Cigar Oasis questions? Um, I, think, I think I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Yep. Uh, so, Hein, are you ready to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks? I am ready. All righty. Three words to describe yourself. Handsome, of course. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I am unpretentious. I try to be. And uneducated. <laughs> if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Uh, an axe. If you just, wrote, oh, is one? Yeah, okay, go. Oh, so, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Um, what you see is what you get. In the okay. popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? A second. I don't know what that is, but I, I because I don't know, I'll, I'll go second. It's popular in Europe. <laughs> Um, okay. So choose two celebrities to be your parents. John Candy and Dom DeLuise. Nice. Well, well they wouldn't make a very... No, that's two dads, dude. Couple. You know yeah. what? It's dads. 2015. It's totally cool. <laughs> it's, fine. It's, fine. It's, it's fine. It's like twins. You know, you mix, yeah. the, mix yeah. the components it's, it's together. Right, right. Yeah. Dude, yeah, those are great choices. Great choices. Right. Love John. My my wife is a huge fan of John Candy. Loves all the John. She makes our kids watch all the John Candy movies: Planes, Trains, Automobiles, Uncle Buck. She loves loves the John Candy movies. Home Alone. Home Alone. Yeah, my worries. my son is yeah. obsessed with Home Alone. <laughs> obsessed. So uh, hi, thank you very much for appearing on the Stogie Geek Show. It was wonderful having you. I I strongly suggest you know if you've got a humidor. Uh, if you're thinking about getting a human ore, you definitely want to check out the Cigar Oasis line of products. I've always been a huge fan. Love the Wi-Fi right. feature. It appeals to the nerd in me, so which is actually most of me. Or maybe the maybe traveler. Me. The traveler. I like the, the traveler. solution with the the battery pack. Yeah, that's totally right. nerdy. And yeah. all of us crazy people in high elevations. So yeah. all you crazy people in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. we have yeah. more things to smoke than cigars. Yeah, but. we do. But. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that on this show. All right, all right, all right. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank I'm... you so much. With that, you, we're going to take a short break and come back. Uh, I would say probably do a debonair ideal segment. Will? Yes, we are doing a debonair ideal segment. Love the debonair ideal segments. We're going to do one of those and talk about a stories of the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 